In this video, we'll continue our study of the probability of a transition by absorption uh, due to a harmonic perturbation. And we're going to look at the probability of transition as a function of the angular frequency of the perturbation. And we've been using omega for this. And now we're keeping TF, the time that we apply the perturbation for, as a constant. Okay, so if we try to plot uh, this probability as a function of omega. Uh, this has some peak uh, at omega fi. And this is a uh, it's usually called the sync function, but it, it looks something like this. So here, this is PIF of T, and we're looking at it as a function of omega. Okay, so what we can see then is um, the probability of transition essentially will depend on the frequency offset, which is omega fi minus omega between the energy, dif energy difference between the two states we're considering, state f and state i, and the angular frequency of our perturbation. The further away uh, the frequency of our perturbation is from this transition energy, the less likely we are to transition, to make the transition between those two states. The closer we are to this energy difference, the more likely we are because we'll be somewhere over here. There are uh, cases which are uh, the zeros over here where the probability will go to zero. So if we choose the wrong angular frequency for our perturbation, uh, we'll have no chance of successfully making the system transition between the two states. This is given by omega fi plus two pi tf. This point over here would be omega fi minus two pi over tf. Okay. That means that uh, the width of this middle lobe is four pi over TF. Uh, if you keep turning the frequency, you'll recover some of the probability up to some extent, but then if you keep detuning it too far away from uh, this uh, resonant frequency, uh, you'll eventually decay the probability back down to zero. Uh, it's also interesting to look at the case where we're very close to uh, omega fi. So for omega roughly equal to omega fi. This is uh, the case of what's known as resonance, which is why I called it the resonant frequency before. Uh, this is when we have the most probability of successfully inducing the system to absorb energy from the perturbation and make our transition to a higher energy state. So we say that the perturbation is in transition in, in resonance with the transition uh, going from state I to state F. And this is familiar vocabulary from uh, classical vibrations where uh, a harmonic oscillator, for instance, has a natural frequency. If you drive it at that natural frequency, you'll get maximal amplitude. We can estimate this probability. So we can estimate uh, the peak value of the probability of transition. So the peak value of PIF 
which is when we take the limit of omega tends to fi or equivalently as omega fi minus omega tends to zero. Okay, so we'll, exp we'll take this expression and look at what happens in the limit as we tune our perturbation to be in resonance with the transition that we're interested in. For that, we're going to call omega prime, omega fi minus omega over two. This will simplify your notation a bit. Then this is equivalent, what we have over here is equivalent to saying in the limit where omega prime tends to zero. Uh, we can tailor expand the sine function over here. Uh, this four goes away because uh, we brought it back down here and it's being squared. So it's essentially the two that we have in this change of variables. The other constants remain the same. We have our omega prime in the denominator from this factor over here. Uh, and then we're going to tailor expand the sine function. So this would be um, omega prime squared. Okay. The first two terms of our uh, Taylor series of the sine function is the linear term and a cubic term. Because we are, and this is uh, all squared, because we're looking at the limit where omega prime tends to zero, we're only going to keep the linear term in our Taylor series expansion, taking any higher order term to be negligibly small. In that case, the probability um, just takes on the following form. Okay. These omega primes cancel out, as which is uh, as a good thing they do because these are very close to zero. times tf squared. Okay, so as we get closer to resonance, uh, this says that the probability of transitioning scales quadratically with the time that the perturbation is applied for. So this peak over here it takes on that value, uh, delta VFI, so the matrix element of the, F, of the operator V squared times TF squared, the time we've applied the perturbation for, and H bar squared. Uh, an important thing to take note of is this expression is only valid Again, if this peak probability is actually very small, otherwise our perturbation, uh, our perturbative treatment up, up to first order wouldn't be valid. What this also uh, tells you or implies is that the probability would be unbound. So the, the longer you apply the perturbation for, the more likely you are to make the transition. This is only true up to some extent uh, the probability can get bigger than one, for example, whereas this expression would allow you to do that. So uh, this is only an approximation up to a certain duration of the perturbation. Uh, this uh, also tells, so this essentially tells you that if you want to increase the probability, you should increase the time you apply 
or you shine light on the system for, uh, for example, up to a certain extent. It also tells you that uh, the, the width of this peak, because it scales as one over TF, will get narrower and, or, and narrower. So the longer we apply perturbation for, the narrower this will get and the taller it will get. So this concludes our exploration of uh, transitions due to absorption from uh, perturbation. And the next video, we're going to briefly look at the second physical phenomenon that's predicted by uh, time-dependent perturbation theory for, a, for an oscillating perturbation, uh, which as we'll see will be the phenomenon of stimulated emission.